What's going on people? My name is Hugh Izzy and we are in Madrid for the World Football Summit 2018 with Avery Dennison to talk about the fusion of fashion in football culture and what the future holds. If you don't know, Avery Dennison are a global brand leader in embellishment. They've actually signed a four-year deal with Barcelona to do their shirts uh, numbers and names. So when you see Messi running around doing his stuff, you know that Avery Dennison are back in your boy. There's a whole bunch of incredible stuff I want to show you inside, but before we do that, let me just tell you, there's a guy called Neil Hurd, who's an author. He's curated a collection of retro football shirts that I really want to see. Let's go and talk to him. I'm here with Neil Hurd. How are you doing, Neil? Not bad, thank you. Here. You are the creator, curator and the creator, I guess, of this collection of incredible shirts that we see behind us. This one in particular, right? This yeah. is something that yeah. reminds me of my childhood. Yeah. Obviously, World Cup 1994. Oh, yeah, well done. And I reckon there's some kind of denim involved. Yeah, that's like one of the most collectible jerseys in football shirt culture. Yeah. Especially back then, the Americans came at it like as a new sport. Yeah. And then rather than sort of saying, look, Oh, there's these rules and norms which goes on in Europe or wherever. You know, we'll have stripes and just copy the British or, you know, French for wherever. They went, no, man, let's make a false denim. You know what I mean? And I just, I love that. I, I mean, even if you feel it, you know, the material's not just like a thin thing. They've actually it tried to different. make it. This one in particular, whilst we're talking about PSG, I mean, how yeah. incredibly old school. Yeah. Um, before they'd got rid of the little cot. You know, PSG are known for this, like, straight... You know, the, it's actually a thing of the Eiffel Tower. It's like a replica of the Eiffel Tower is where it was. It was a, a designer called Daniel Hector. Okay. Again, even back then, I think it was about 73, they, they got a French designer in to design their badge and then their kit. They weren't silly even back then, PSG. Right. And that's maybe why the shirt's so good. And then we've got the more kind of classic yeah. look. I'm thinking Maldini, Baresi. Yeah, you got it. And it's so interesting to me that they don't actually use the AC Milan logo. They've gone for the Champions League trophy yeah. and the one star. And so, yeah, Milan obviously had won the European Cup the year before. And that's to represent, I'm not sure actually, I think that's 10 or 20 um, Serie A vi victories. If that comes out on the pitch, my heart starts to race a bit. Like, this is Milan, this yeah. is the big boys, you know? Well, I put out a tweet earlier and asked people which they thought was their favourite or which really? one they would like to take home. Yeah. And we had quite a couple of people choosing this one. Yeah, yeah. Very classic. Again, yeah. I, would, I kind of see Rude Hullet wearing yeah. this. That's exactly right. Um, so simple, it's elegant. Yeah. But yet yeah, it also fits into this thing that's happening right now. I think this shirt and the shirt around the corner, which maybe we'll go and see, which is the Germany of the same tournament, Euro 88. Literally, they were the birth of this whole graphic movement. If you wanted to pick two shirts, that's right. the two shirts. This is like something that they've actually, Adidas tried to incorporate in the new, new world. Design, uh, exactly, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Without the colors. That's right. So you're seeing like this fusion happening again. Talk to me about what you see. Yeah, no, I think like you said, I mean, it's, it's known as the Italian 90 shirt, even though if you really know your stuff, you know it came out in 88, as you just said. And I think again, with that Holland shirt, that was it. Basically, if you ask most football shirt people to name their top three, they're going to say that shirt or that shirt, I guarantee you. And I think, like you said, it was interesting at this World Cup because basically, especially Adidas, or I say Adidas, they went back to their roots and lots of their shirts were like modern reinterpretations yeah. of design classics, which I think is the way jerseys have got to go. You know, everybody's got a bit sick of that ultra plane. And so they kind of brought that up and, as you said, made it monochrome, put some lines in it. So it was yeah. contemporary, but... I loved it, quite frankly. And then, of course, we've got this, which is, I guess, the culmination of all the ideas, all the history and experience that people have got. They've seen what has actually been a marketing man's dream, I would imagine, yeah. uh, unraveling in front of their eyes, sold out within an hour or less, yeah. and almost impossible to get anywhere else. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, again, you know what? As I was saying to you earlier, for me, you know, as the brand's been a bit behind, and I was sort of like working a bit with Nike, not blowing my own trumpet, but it was like, I was saying, like, you know, look, the guys, everybody's a bit sick of this monochrome heritage we'd had for yeah. 10 years, a plain jersey with the whatever out on it, you know, go for graphic, you know, and I think with this shirt particularly, they kind of grabbed that and then added a, a thousand percent. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. you know, and it worked. We saw the results for ourselves, yeah. didn't we? Quite interesting that it's right next to this one, Mexican classic from France 98, yeah. which is as loud, as proud, and also touches on the culture and the history. I guess this is an Aztec design. 
Yeah, again, I, I like that. I always like to include that one in there because, yeah, it's really graphic like we're just seeing, and I think they should go back to that. But I like it when like designers are maybe working with the FAs who are willing, you know, they incorporate something about that country. Right. So rather than just doing like, like that shit, you know, that's that Naiha culture, you know, going back to a little bit of uh, traditional Nigerian fabric. And this yeah. is sort of like going back to that Mayan and Azteca, yeah. you know, and it's a big, massive... Yeah, it's beautiful. You know, it's great. You know, where they used to um, offer their offerings to the gods. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and again, I love that shit. You've got to love it. It's a, it's a classic. Listen, Neil, pleasure talking to you. Yeah, thank you, Hugh. Thank awesome. you, man. Pleasure, man.